franchises you own are sellable, right? I mean, it's it's not like you just get cash flow and then it burns out. It's like somebody can come in and say, I still want to buy that business. Yes and no. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely saleable. But I notice so far, my observation, I haven't studied this as an economist. I've studied this as a business person mm -hmm. looking for good business opportunities for myself and hopefully one day my children. And what I see is that my high tech business, which is always built on growth, when I go to sell, my typical exits are 20 to 40 times cash flow. Mm -hmm. So if I'm earning a nickel, they'll pay me a dollar for that business. Right. Not that they want to earn a nickel, the new owner. Right. Well, let's get real specific here. I build a business for a million dollars. It's making 50 grand a year, 5%. Somebody buys it for 10 to $2 million. Mm -hmm. It's earning down them 2.5%, mm -hmm. but they think it's growing very fast. Right. With franchise businesses and retail businesses, for some reason, I don't have any defined reason why, the multiples are not uh, 0.05 cap rate, which means you sell it 20 times your, your uh, cash flow. They're more like three, four, five times. You sell a business for five times cash flow. Mm -hmm. I think that's because retail businesses require an intense amount of effort on behalf of the owner. They require amazing diligence, and you take your eye off the ball, it drops fast. Mm -hmm. The customer doesn't tell you he had a bad meal. My father taught me when I had a bad meal to politely ask the person, is the manager here? Mm -hmm. Better yet, come by during the day when they're not crowded and tell the manager, I've enjoyed this place for years. We had a bad meal. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to complain. I want you to fix it before something happens. Mm -hmm. And I was brought up that that's what a businessman does for another businessman. Right. Today, nobody cares. Yeah. You have a bad meal. Just think of the last deal that didn't meet expectations or a product. Yeah, they're getting Did one you, star reviews on Google and uh, you know, or no reviews or no reviews. Yeah, tell the customers all go away. Yeah, and so what we start to see is retail business is something that you've got to focus on, and most franchises, maybe because someone's done a lot of the intellectual property work, you're lucky if you can get out at five times. Now the good news, during the ten years you might own and run it, you're earning twenty percent on your money. Yeah. And you can borrow money at 10% or 11%, pay off interest on your, the money you borrowed, and still earn 20% on the total amount of money, or 30%. So the franchise businesses let you get the cash flow earlier, but don't have the amazing residuals when you go to sell. Yeah, not, not the big exit. But, I, but at the same time, like if I were to consider, uh, somebody said, well, maybe I'll buy real estate, I'll buy an apartment building, and I'll collect rent every month. But the cash flow on that rent relative to the investment you put in I don't think it's anything close to what you're describing in a franchise. And maybe the real estate would go up in value a lot, maybe it won't, who knows. But if you're still saying, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell this thing for, more, for much more than what it cost me to put it up, and I collected all this cash along the way, that seems like a, a pretty attractive way to, to, to go for people who are looking, who've worked hard for some period of years or has maybe, in, maybe it's an inheritance, you know, uh, parents mm -hmm. die and they left you some money saying, what do I do with this? It seems like an attractive way to, to generate what some people like to refer to as passive income. I never think it's totally passive, but it's, it's not you having to go to work every day to, for a paycheck type Well, income. franchises really are. Most mm -hmm. franchise businesses, which generally means most retail businesses, mm -hmm. or businesses that serve things like cleaning houses or cleaning build, office buildings or some type of franchise business where someone developed a model, they require an intense amount of focus by the entrepreneur individual franchise owner. Mm -hmm. If they didn't, the parent company would never sell you one. Right. If Planet Fitness could have built 1,600 corporate stores, all owned by that wonderful guy, Mike, back in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. he would have done it. Yeah. But he found the most important criteria to making a successful gym was the owner, mm -hmm. the manager who sits there and hires the best people, l makes his employees learn everyone's name, and builds a family business around an individual gym. And he found the only way he could grow that was making everyone his partner in a franchise environment. And that's why you rarely see a franchise that doesn't require, despite what people tell you, a lot of hands-on work. How many hours a week do you spend right now on, uh, you know, in your two franchises? Well, I don't, but my wife goes there virtually every day. Oh, really? Okay. But she enjoys going there yeah. every day. She walks around the gym. She talks to people. How are you? And they say, great. And how do you like Planet Fitness? Oh, I love it. And the, what, who are you? Oh, well, my family, she says, owns this particular franchise. Mm. Wow, I love it. And she loves the karma she gets. Right. She makes a lot of money at it because right. that's the byproduct of serving society. Mm -hmm. If you serve a product to someone very well and make them very happy, trust me, you'll make a lot of money. <laughs> the moment you take your eye off the product and the end use customer mm -hmm. and how much they're enjoying it, the moment you don't get really upset when someone has a bad experience right. in your business, right. get out of the business because it's going to kick you out.
<laughs> it's an interesting uh, term. It's going to kick you out. <laughs> you brought up one of my other areas I think is ripe for a huge investment opportunity, mm -hmm. and that's real estate, but not necessarily the real estate you think of. Mm -hmm. Most people think of real estate like you buy an apartment building. Mm -hmm. You buy some type of commercial space, tenant shows up, and you just sit there for collecting coupons for the next 20 years. No longer. The reason is that the real estate needs of people are changing. Mm -hmm. I recently became a significant investor in funds that invest in senior housing. Mm -hmm. And a typical senior housing project is about 110 apartments, 120 apartments, that seniors who are moving out of the town, might be Allentown, Pennsylvania, or some mm -hmm. area in California, where they are moving to Florida, but they no longer need the big house. Right. But they want to get an apartment that they can still see the grandkids from, mm -hmm. but they also think, because they're 67 years old, how will I age in this apartment? Mm -hmm. how, what's the floor plan like? How will I stay here if I'm ever disabled, mm -hmm. or my spouse is, and I want to stay together? Mm -hmm. So we start to see a whole new need arising, which no one is filling today, for senior housing, mm -hmm. because it's changing so fast. Right. Seniors might say, I could live at home till I die if only I had someone just eight minutes a day to help me get dressed in the morning. Mm -hmm. We call that senior assisted living. Right. And all of that is up for grabs right now. So the funds I invest in are buying thousands, tens of thousands of senior housing units. And I work with them on a technology committee to how can we improve senior housing? What kind of products and services would a senior want? The first thing I notice when I go into a senior housing project is at the end of the night, they have a piece of paper and they walk down the hall going, Mr. Gintempo, did you take your medicine tonight? Mm -hmm. Great, click. I look at that piece of paper, and that should be an iPad. Because okay. somewhere there's a grandchild or a child who would love to know, Dad took his medicines at 11.02 p.m. Right. You and I don't want to know that, <laughs> but we wouldn't want to know it around our own kids, right. especially if they don't live with us, right. to know they took their medicine, to know they had breakfast, to know they went bowling today. And so we start to see just opening up with transparency the activities of senior living to the people below them, meaning to their children and grandchildren, is a huge business ripe for the taking. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I'm working on now as a board member and consultant, and I see wide open as we move to housing that really doesn't exist, senior assisted housing that really adds value for seniors, because then you can up the rent in a good way and people will be thrilled to pay it, because yeah. they're getting real value for it, not just a place to put grandma. So I know uh, from prior conversations we've had that you put a lot of money into that. Uh, what's, what's your time horizon on that one, though? Um, very good point. I disagree with the funds I invested. They invest in a three to six year horizon. Mm -hmm. They spend three years, they raise typically 50 or 100 million per fund. Mm -hmm. They spend three years buying apartment pro uh, senior projects or whatever our projects are. Then they spend, turn them around, fix them up, add value, then spend three years selling. Mm -hmm. They're very into adding value and selling. Mm -hmm. I think that's crazy because we're selling deals at an eight or nine percent rate of return. I'm earning two or three percent on T bills at the bank. Right. I don't want more money to earn to two and three percent that was earning eight or nine. And I tell them, hold on to it longer. Yeah. They go, not so fast, Paul. Our business of funds and how we're known on Wall Street is we give you back your money every six years. Mm -hmm. There are other funds that run by different companies that have a 10 or 20 year horizon. Fortunately or unfortunately, I'm not in them. So we keep making our money every three to six years, getting it back, and I keep investing with the same. I was going to say, but you, at that point, it's kind of nice to get it back because you can decide, do I want to reinvest or I'd like cash now, so I don't have to reinvest. At least you have some options relative to that.